Sometimes you find technology where you might not expect. Ex officio garments offer technology and features like stain and water resistant fabrics, pants that become shorts in an instant, indestructible buttons and security zip pockets, built in insect repellent, even UV protection and a multi position sun collar. Our clothing is technically designed from head to toe. Ex officio, made to last, made to protect, made to adventure. After a year of touring North America, searching for big game from a kayak, Jim Sammons is back on the road, searching for something new. Since he sat in his kayak for the first time over 20 years ago, Jim has always been told what he couldn't accomplish from the seat of his ocean kayak. It's too rough, it's too windy, the waves are too big, and the fish are too strong. Of course, these comments have only driven Jim to push the limits of the sport to new levels every year. This season, Jim's mission is to explore those places where kayaks aren't supposed to go, to prove that anything is possible from a kayak, to find the fishing impossible. Welcome to Canada, eh? I made a trip up here uh, last year to fish with Ken and Brendan and um, also run whitewater and had a little bit of trouble as uh, some people have seen in the whitewater. I uh, actually got stuck in a hole and came pretty close to drowning. It was probably one of the scariest things that I've ever had in my life. So we wanted to do this trip again. We want to do a longer type of trip but we knew that I needed some real training to, to learn how to handle white water. So we're gonna spend some time with Brendan Mark and uh, get some training, get that training I really need. Learn how to read the river better, learn how to handle the kayak in that moving water that I'm just not used to. So hopefully this time I can uh, keep my head above water. Getting it. We're making progress here. Get a smile on your face, you're not as gripped anymore. A little more relaxed. <laughs> With whitewater training complete, Jim is ready for his next mission. After being skunked trying to catch a muskie in Canada last year, Jim is back again to give it his best shot. But this year's mission is more dangerous than ever. Teamed up with champion kayaker Ken Whiting, Jim must survive six whitewater-filled days down the Petawawa River, a river known well for its healthy muskie population. The journey will take Jim deep into Canada's wilderness and through prime bear country. Joining Jim and Ken for two days before heading down the Petawawa River is kayak muskie angler extraordinaire, Jamie Pastilli. 
Jamie is going to show Jim and Ken the trick to hooking up the freshwater beasts, hopefully this time without hooking himself. Oh God, I got to the hospital. <laughs> go, yeah, get, you're, you're, go get your shine You're the red-headed stepchild of kayak fishing. <laughs> they hire talent by the inch around here. As you can see, they got a few on me. have a very small budget. <laughs> <laughs> we're going down the dusty road trying to find a piece of water to go fishing in, man. Because we're going to go uh, put in up at the top of the lake and then set up shuttle and uh, drive the vehicles all the way back because we're going to go... Um, what was it, 50 kilometers? Yep. So a 50 kilometer trip that we, uh, we're going to do down the river. So we're going to spend two days fishing the lake the and then, uh, fish the river for four more days and uh, working our way down back to the, back to the vehicles. So we're up here on Lake Traverse not quite the same as uh, our last location. We're, we're not right in the middle of the city this time, are we? Hey, who knows, you know, uh, the water level is down as well, so those guys out in the middle won't be able to fish where we're fishing. So let's give a couple casts and see what we can pull out. Yeah, that was, it was so shallow here, it's only about this deep, kind of like fish in the flats for redfish and uh, so we're just pulling them pulling uh, frogs through threw it out there as soon as it landed about 10 feet away I just saw that wake came in I was like oh here we go wham it just hit it hit hard it wasn't a big fish but it just came in with such speed oh there we go nice fish Jim that's a muskie <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Not huge, but uh, it's definitely a muskie, right? Absolutely. Got that tiger stripe look to it. Oh, look at those colors, baby. Got him! There we go! Got him! Oh! Haha! <laughs> nice little muskie there! Came up right beside the boat. Saw him follow earlier. Came back in. Did a little figure eight. And here she is. Gotta watch those teeth. Nice little guy. Probably the smallest one today. We're getting a lot of these smaller fish, but uh, with the, with the right tackle, boy, they're a lot of fun. Oh, that fish came right off that weed bed. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a nice fish. There you go. Oh yeah, there we go. Blast. Unbelievable. Congratulations on your musky. first musky. You know, we, we got a whole bunch of fish. We got a, I got a big one this morning, 42 or so inches, and uh, they were clobbering the topwaters. We had lots and lots of action, lots of fish. Ken got his first one as well. And hey, what else can you ask for in a, in a musky trip, right? Had a fish. <laughs> With his mission accomplished, Jamie heads home and lets the boys begin their river adventure.
that one spot we, we went in one spot below some rapids and just caught a, a ton of uh, catfish which were really fun <laughs> so, trying to get some uh, some walleye and just putting little minnows on a lead head and we've been drifting through here and it's just been non-stop on these catfish got a, one walleye or actually a couple walleye and then a couple of really small bass but it's just been non-stop on these you know five uh, that one's five again you know five six pound um, catfish I certainly wouldn't starve to death if I was willing to eat catfish what was very tough for me was getting used to water running uphill. You know, you're going down a river, the water's moving down, but then the current next to it, because coming off a rock or something else, the water actually is going a different direction. And you really need to be able to, to learn to read that because those eddy lines, if you're not paying attention and you're not on the right edge of your kayak, you'll find yourself flipped over very quickly. So you need to learn to do eddy turns and just, just be more aware. So that's one of the most important things for this, for me on this training is learning to read that water and get the feel for how I need to move my boat. Um, because you, you can get flipped over so quickly if, you, if you're not on it, if you're not paying attention, if you're not really um, aware of those eddy lines. We didn't really see anybody yesterday. Didn't see much in the way of people before that. Finally saw a couple people. So, I mean, we're here in, uh, I don't even remember what month it is, September. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ap after Labor Day. People, uh, this park just quiets right down. It's pretty busy. It gets pretty busy in the uh, in the summer. Although this this section, it's remote. It's committing, and it's got white water that uh, you, if you're not experienced with white water, you're gonna be portaging around, and the portages are significant. Yeah, man. Woohoo! Come on, man. All right. He's got uh, both sets of hooks in him right now. He only had one in until he kind of did a, a roll up the line. Got the other one in the back of his head. <laughs> right on, man. I was having a tough day yesterday. Seems to be coming together a little bit better today. Well, my oh, show! Faster than it ever has All been. Right. At least that's the way that it feels. There's a rumbling in my soul. My foot falls on the floor. Yeah. They sound like right. steel on steel. And when I go out walking, all the people gather around. Just a pitch bed is round. But once again, we. Uh, this is the top of a little rapid. I, I think ever since we figured this out, we've gotten fish at the top of every rapid. So, this one's a little bit smaller. I tossed it behind a log and he hit it right behind the log. My bones are like steel rails, all my boys can do as well. In another life, I bet I was a train. That would be three muskie for me today. How many is Ken out? Ken? Ken, how many muskie do you have today? 
<laughs> oh man. Yeah, but like I said, the thing is, we, we've kind of figured this out. I mean, the stabile lures certainly are, 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 are whacking the fish, and we found that the bottom and the top of, the, of each of these rapids, there's a little bit more current, is where we've actually gotten the fish to stick. Uh, I got one up there, it was kind of a funneling current right next to a rock. Yeah. It's probably a bit musky. I am a bit musky. Got another musky. It's not so big, but uh, not a bad little guy either. He hit it hard. Hit the big Seville lure like a hammer, and for once stuck. God, when Jamie caught that musky, I mean, that just seems, that seems like a long, long time ago. But it's still, it just every day was so long. So much time on the water, so much fishing, it just flew by. <laughs> I got a, a better muskie, man. This is about 10 minutes after my second, which was two minutes after my first. Are we ready to enter the world of society again? <laughs> no. <laughs>